Hey, hey, how you doing? David Taub here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com, and man, do we have a treat for you, because today I am kicking off an exclusive set of lessons and interviews with the world-renowned guitarist Lou Paolo. Lou was Les Paul's rhythm guitar player for like almost 30 years. I had a chance recently to meet Lou Paolo in uh, New Jersey, and I'll tell you, probably the nicest guy you ever are gonna meet in your life. Just what, what, a, what a humble, nice man. And I'll tell you, man, the guy, <laughs> the guy is something. I, I don't know if I've ever seen guys who, uh, someone who can move through these incredible altered jazz chords so fast and so fluidly and be able to make so many substitutions. The, the guy is just a legend. Uh, he has shared the stage with just about every epic guitar player ever. I'm talking about, you know, besides being with the Les Paul Trio and playing with Les for almost 30 years, um, he shared the stage with and recorded with players like Keith Richards, Paul McCartney, Billy Gibbons, Slash, Steve Vai, George Benson, Steve Miller, Jose Feliciano, Jimmy Page, Tommy Emanuel, George Benson, Zach Wilde, Jeff Beck, Al Dimiola, B.B. King. I mean, it's, it's a who's who list of, of the greatest players, some of the greatest players of all times, and Lou has either recorded or shared the stage with them uh, throughout his career. He's known as the man of a million inversions because his chord knowledge is so extensive and his rhythm playing is so spot on. And I, I had a, a, an amazing opportunity when I was on the East Coast recently. I went to see him play at the Iridian Club, and that's the same club where Les Paul played every Monday night. Uh, up until he passed away in 2009. And uh, Lou Paolo continues to play Monday nights at the Iridian Club in New York City. If you ever get a chance, go to it. It's, it's fun and uh, a great time. And he does a lot of recording. They just, he just finished up doing a Thank You Less tribute record. Just incredible guitar players all signing on to pay tribute to Les and keep his legacy of music alive. And also he's he's just finished up the New Jersey Guitar Mafia record, which is another really interesting and fun project. And he'll tell you all that in a minute. So um, enjoy these, these little lessons and interviews with Lou. Keep on rocking. I'm David Taub, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. We'll see you soon. Check this out. <laughs> Musicians use the modes, and I, I like going to the chord progressions and playing closer to the melody. Number one, of course, I always love melody. Les even said it, it's so difficult to hear someone play the exact melody and play it real pretty, especially a pretty song. They all play around the melody, and some of them don't even play near the melody because it is really hard to play the melody itself. And he's right. And um, so that's why I like playing closer to the chord changes because the melody note is into the chord changes. And that's where we should stay. I, I feel that that's where the chorus should be when you're playing the chorus. So if you're playing, uh, we'll take a song, i try and take an easy one, like uh, I'm Confessing. That's the melody. Right, so if I'm gonna play a chorus on that, back to the melody again so at least you're close you few of your notes that you're playing are in the melody but if you're playing modes you're just all over the place then as you know as the modes are the importance of arpeggios in chords so if you're going to play a chorus uh, and you have a G seventh, and you want to play uh, some notes on it. Here's your arpeggio. So here's your G 
seventh. And here we go. That's your G7. We're going to resolve into a C minor like this. A regular C minor, C minor 7. So. chord and listen to the nose. G7, I'll play the chord. So when you're learning the chords, of course, your C minor chord, learn the arpeggio to that chord, and it's actually every note that you're playing in the chord. You can see your fingers are there already. Here it is. Let's just play three notes. Now we'll put four, five. Now there it is. So there's a note, there's a note, there's a note. But now we're gonna add. the same thing. Uh, when you're in a minor key on standards, as you hit the C minor, and you hit the G7, when you're playing the five chord of the C minor, well, of course, C minor, we're making that the one chord, C minor, and your G7 is your five seven, you can substitute a diminished chord. Now, diminish, as you know, you've probably been taught. And you can hear that now. Now we're adding the diminished chord to the seventh arpeggio. We'll do it again. to the C minor. Working with us, we were at the first uh, Iridium, and one night uh, Tony Matola showed up, Bucky Pizzarelli, Al Caiola, Vinnie Bell, and we got them all up on stage, and we played a few numbers together, and they took a picture of us, and it said, the New Jersey Guitar Mafia. And from that day, we were all known as the New Jersey Guitar Mafia, and Ben Elliott from Showplace Studios decided, well, let's do uh, an Italian, so a lot of Italian songs with the New Jersey Guitar Mafia, and that's how we put that together. And um, we did a lot of Italian songs, and it came out beautiful. All right, Gary Maserati was the first uh, uh, bass player with Les Paul Trio at Fat Tuesdays for 12, for 12 years. Uh, and he's Italian and from New Jersey, and that's why we used him. Al Caiola, uh, a lot of people know him. He has been backing up Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet for the past 20 some odd years. He's also worked with Frank Sinatra, um, Perry Como. He's worked with all the big names and Johnny Mathis too. He did a lot of theme songs on TV. Can I name like Bonanza, yeah. um, The Magnificent Seven, the movie that was him playing guitar. Then you have Bucky Pizzarelli who played uh, with like Dion on the Belmonts to Jerry Vale. And we have Frank Vignola, who does a lot of Django 
and he is a whiz on the guitar. I mean, he's, his, his technique is unbelievable. <laughs>